Kawasaki announced seven new models today. Let's get into it. What's happening everybody? Nick Olson, Chupacabra Off-Road. Thanks for tuning in and let's get into this 2021 release from Kawasaki. They announced seven new models today and a couple little variations of the KRX. Now, as most of you guys know, KRX 1000 launched last year. It was pretty well received as a being a reliable unit that had a really high value. It was on the heavier side and it had a lot of uh, beefy components like the frame and the suspension and really delivered a lot of bang for the buck. Now I've owned a lot of Kawasaki dirt bikes in my day, so it was exciting to see another major Japanese manufacturer jump into the sport side-by-side -side unit, increasing the competition, giving us all one more option, and uh, making it that much better for all of us. So with that, let's get into what they're offering for model year 2021. So the KRX 1000 base model is the same as last year with one notable feature, which is a low battery indicator, and it's also available in a blue color and it retains the same price of $20,499. Now there are two new models or more or less just variations of this base model KRX 1000. The first being the special edition, which has a couple accessories like a high grade Hyphonics Bluetooth AM FM audio system, which is about 600 watts of power. It includes a LED dash mounted radio, two six and a half inch waterproof door speakers and a 12 inch subwoofer. The special edition also includes a worn VRX 45 winch, which is about a $360 value, and special edition color and graphics. Now the second new model is a trail edition, which is a little bit more set up for some trail rock conditions. Accessories include sport front and rear bumpers, Nerf bars, the KQR sport roof, also includes a worn VRX 45 winch, and it also comes with trail edition colors and graphics. So unfortunately, not a whole lot of news. I'm really not that surprised that they didn't launch a turbo model, but I was really hoping that Kawasaki would come out with a four seat version. I think this frame, this chassis, all that would work really well. I think they definitely sell some units, especially for us guys, of course, in the Southwest that want to carry more than one passenger. You know, comparing it to Honda, Honda really launched with two different flavors of one unit, then they quickly followed with a four seater and even a live valve edition. So. I was hopeful that Kawasaki would also kind of hit the ground running. This was their first model, but all we're really seeing are just a couple of variations and trim levels of the standard base model KRX 1000. Now, most publications that have reviewed the KRX owners have all stated that they think that this model has a lot of value for the money. And I felt the same thing when you look on their website and you look at some of their accessories. They've got a full skid plate for under $400. If you did want to add a tailgate, $216. Um, you can also add an increased uh, alternator kit, which bumps the amperage by over 60 for under $700. So it's pretty cool to see a manufacturer deliver a side-by-side -side with good value. And then also they're not really price gouging you like some of the other OEMs on their house brand accessories. So the KRX really packs a lot of value for the money and we'll touch on that a little bit more here in just a minute. But first I did mention there are seven new models. Couldn't uh, bring them up without bringing up the new dirt bikes. As you guys know, I'm a two wheel guy at heart. My first dirt bike ever was a good old 1994 KX250. It was pretty clapped out, but you know, my first love in the, in the dirt bike world. So I always have a soft spot for Team Green. So let's talk about a couple of the models. Now they announced four dirt bike models, essentially their 2021 250F and 450. And both of those received some little basic updates, the most notable being the electric start and the increased power on the KX250F. What I got excited about were seeing the XC off-road versions of these models, and this really plays well in my wheelhouse because I currently own an off-road model, the Husqvarna FX350, which is an off-road version of the 350 motocross bike. So if you're like me, you like to do it all, you like to ride track, you ride off-road, um, you know, do a little bit of trail riding, everything in between, these XC models are become more popular. A lot of guys don't really ride motocross anymore. If they do, it's kind of sparingly, especially if you're like us out here in Arizona where we can pretty much ride in a lot of open deserts. So a couple of the changes that makes these Kawasaki's XC models are the 18 inch rear wheel, softer suspension settings, 
a full skid plate, and a kickstand. Now here in Arizona, I absolutely love having the 18 inch rear wheel. It's a lot more compliant when I'm in uh, rocky trails, wash bottoms, that type of thing. Also gives you a lot more traction, but I was surprised Kawasaki didn't put a bigger fuel tank on these. Um, guys that race off-road, like works racers, particularly if you're fast, they need a bigger fuel capacity. And even when I'm out exploring trails, it's so nice to have a little extra fuel, knowing I can go an extra 10 or 15 miles because I love trying to find new trails, I love getting lost, and it's nice to have that peace of mind. One other feature that I was also hoping for that uh, I have on my Husqvarna is a wide range transmission where it looks like these transmissions are unchanged from the motocross model. So cool to see Kawasaki finally launching some uh, off-road versions like Honda and like Yamaha have been doing, but next year guys, 2022, step it up, give us some bigger fuel tanks and uh, we'll be happier. Now I know Kawasaki, you guys are probably basking in the glory of Eli winning the Supercross Championship and you guys are the top, top team right now, top bike, but Competition's got bigger fuel tanks, so put one on your XC models for 2022. Believe me, you'll sell more, we'll all appreciate it. All right, so let's wrap this video up with a comparison. How do we think the KRX stacks up against a similarly priced Can-Am X3? So for the purpose of this comparison, we're gonna compare the Can-Am Base X3 DS Turbo R. Now the MSRP is $20,999, so it's 500 bucks more than your base model KRX 1000. Now the obvious difference, of course, is horsepower. 112 versus 172, it's not even a comparison. Not to mention with Can-Am, there's so many aftermarket upgrades if you wanna go in double that amount of horsepower. I really like the Can-Am's wheelbase better, being a little bit longer, but, so the number one question you need to ask yourself if you're comparing these two models is, what is your budget and how much do you plan on customizing your side-by-side? Now, if you don't really go to the dunes, 112 horsepower works really well in most situations. The KRX has a much beefier frame and suspension components. You're already getting some 31 inch tires, some bead locks. It really packs a lot of value for the money. It's got that quality Japanese fit and finish. Um, from what I've heard, very few squeaks and rattles even after hundreds and thousands of miles of ownership. So at that price point, you don't have to spend a whole lot to have a really solid, reliable unit. It's a little bit wider than the X3. Uh, because it's heavier, I heard it rides really plush and really comfortable. But as you guys know, this channel, we really cater to you guys in the Southwest. And with Southwest means there's gonna be some dune riding, which means most all of your riding buddies probably already have a side-by-side -side with a turbo in it. And you don't wanna get left behind, right? You wanna be able to hang and uh, maybe, maybe even one-up them. So I really gotta steer you guys towards the Can-Am, I mean, I've talked a lot about some of the shortcomings of the can -Am I don't like, how you have to spend the extra money potentially correcting the front bump steer, beefing up the bulkhead, um, you're gonna need some bigger tires, which is probably gonna result in a need for some clutching. But with can -Am, the aftermarket is so robust, there's so many options, there's so many things you can do. If you're gonna be making a purchase, you're gonna have it for quite a while, you really enjoy up updating the performance, trying different accessories, the X3 is going to be a better platform for you. So that's how I wrap them up, guys. Value, bang for your buck, happy how it is. Seriously consider the KRX. If you like to rock crawl, I heard they're exceptional in the rocks. You got the low power mode. Um, you know, it's, it's a great all around unit, spacious and comfortable, more storage than the X3. But if you're going to be doing any duning at all, you like customizing, you like the look of the, uh, the X3, can't am hands down. You know, for a lot of us guys, customizing these vehicles is half of the fun. So as long as you're not looking at your credit card statement, you'll be happier if you get an X3. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the content, please like and subscribe. That really helps us grow the channel. And uh, we've got a lot more coming your way.